Let us have some preful problems. In the lower right of this video are the formula in getting unknown variables. Now, in our example number one, it says that a student accidentally dropped her pen from the second floor of the school building, which is 5 meters from the ground. How fast is it moving when it hits the ground? In solving any problem, we always need to identify first what is asked. Here, we are looking for the final velocity of the pen. Then, the given in the problem are negative 9.8 meter per second square, which is our constant acceleration, an initial velocity of zero because it was dropped from a certain place, and a displacement of negative 5 meters. Now, some of you may ask why is it negative? Once again, we use negative convention to show the direction of an object. In this case, since it is from top to bottom, we will use negative sign. Now that we have the given already, look at the list of the formula in the bottom right of this video. What do you think is the most appropriate formula to be used? Very good. Our working formula would be VF square is equal to VI square plus 2GY. To solve this, we substitute first the values in our formula. So, Final velocity is equal to 0 squared, our initial velocity, plus 2 multiplied by negative 8 meter per second square, multiplied by negative 5 meters. We perform the operation as indicated. 0 squared is 0, plus 98 meters squared over second square. Now, since our final velocity is in square, we will find the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of Vf square is equal to Vf, and then the square root of 98 meter square over second square is 9.90 meter per second. But since the direction of the velocity of the pen is going down, our final answer will be negative 9.90 meter per second or 9.90 meter per second downward. Remember these conventions because velocity along with acceleration and displacement which are variables in solving free fall problems are all vector quantities and therefore require us to identify the direction where the quantity is going. Let us have another example. A tennis ball is thrown downward at a speed of 2 meter per second. If its velocity just before it hits the ground is 7.9 meter per second, from what height was it thrown? In this problem, we are looking for displacement y, the initial and final velocities of the tennis ball as well as the acceleration due to gravity are all given. Again, our initial and final velocities of the ball are all negative since it's directed downward. From the set of formula that we have in this last problem, what do you think is the formula that we can derive to get the unknown quantity y? Pause this video and try to identify and derive the formula. Okay, if you chose vf square is equal to vi squared plus 2gy, then you are correct. We can derive this formula as y is equal to vf square minus vi square all over 2g. Now that we have our working formula already, the next step is to substitute the given in the equation. y is equal to negative 7.9 meter per second square, our final velocity, minus negative 2 meter per second square, our initial velocity, all over 2, multiplied by negative 9.8 meter per second square. When we square negative 7.8 meter per second, we will get 62.41 meter square over second square. Then, we subtract this by the square of negative 2 meter per second, 
which is 4 meters square over second square. And then, all of these divided by negative 19.6 meter per second square, the product of 2 and negative 9.8 meter per second square. The difference of our values in numerator is positive 58.41 meter square over second square over negative 19.8 meter per second square. At this point, we cancel the units. Second square and then meter will be left in the numerator when we divide meter square by meter. Our final answer will be negative 2.95 meters. We conclude from this that the tennis ball was thrown from a height of 2.98 meters. The negative sign only indicates the downward direction of the motion of the ball. If everything is clear so far, let us now proceed to our last problem for this video. Ellen decided to flip a coin to determine which of her homework she should do first. Assuming the coin was flipped up, A. What was its velocity as it leaves Ellen's hand if it reached a maximum height of 0.30 meter and B. If Ellen got the coin at the same height as she released it, how long was it in the air? In this problem, we are asked to compute for a question A. The initial velocity and B. The total time of travel in the air. The final velocity is given at 0 meter per second since it reached a maximum height of 0 0.30 meter. We also have our acceleration constant volume. Before we continue solving for these, remember the three cases we had in the last video. The first case is when an object is dropped. The second case is when the object is thrown downward. And lastly, the third case where the object is thrown upward. Since this is under case number three, the velocity at the maximum height is zero. We can use this as our final velocity if the upward motion is considered. However, we can use this as well as initial velocity when the downward motion of the coin is used. It is because the coin moved up first, then went back down. Therefore, we have two situations that we can use in the problem. But in the problem, we will use the final velocity as zero as it reached the maximum height. It is also mentioned that Ellen got the coin at the same height as she released it. We can say that the time taken for the coin to, to go up is equal to the time taken for the coin to go down to Ellen's hand. Since we have contextualized the situation clearly, let us choose among the formula we can use to solve the problem. In solving for the initial velocity, we can use the equation vf square is equal to vi square plus 2gy, which we can manipulate algebraically to our working equation vi square is equal to vf square minus 2gy. While to get time, we can use vf is equal to vi plus gt, which we can derive as t is equal to vf minus vi all over g. Let us first compute our initial velocity. From the given, our final velocity is 0 minus 2 times negative 9.8 meter per second square multiplied by 0 0.30 meter. Notice that this our y is not negative because we flip the coin upward. Therefore, the direction is in positive y direction. Then, we will perform the operations. Negative 2 multiplied by 9.8 meter per second square times 0 0.30 meter is positive 5.88 meter square over second square. Then, we will get the square root of both sides. And our initial velocity would be positive 2.42 meter per second. Now, we will use this initial velocity to get time. In this case, the time it takes for coin to go up is the same as it goes down. Let us substitute the given in our formula. T is equal to 0, our final velocity, minus 2.42 meter per second, our initial velocity, 
all over negative 9.8 meter per second square. When we perform this operation, our final answer is time is equal to 0 0.247 second. We are not done here yet though. The problem asks for a total time in the air. So we have to multiply this by 2. 1 as the object goes up and 1 as it goes down. So 0 0.247 second times 2 is equal to 0 0.49 second. Therefore, the velocity of the coin when it was released is 2.42 meter per second upward and it stayed in the air for a total of 0 0.49 second. And that's it. I posted some other questions about free fall and uniformly accelerated motion in our BBL. I highly encourage you to practice on this because it is only through practice you can attain mastery in solving, analyzing, and contextualizing problems in physics. Again, this is Gilmar De Castro and see you in the next video.